Hi everyone, in this video I am going to go through the notes that I have created while reading this book. The book name is The Truth About High Frequency Trading by Rishi Narang. If you are someone who is preparing for interviews or if you just want to know how high frequency trading works, you can go through the entire video. Uh, if you want to access the notes that I have discussed in this video, just go to the comment section. You will find our WhatsApp number. Just ping us on WhatsApp and I will share you the notes. Uh, if you have enough time, you can also buy the book and go through the book, Amazing Resources to Understand High Frequency Trading. So let's start with the video. Now, high frequency trading is also called low latency trading. It's a, a domain where we monetize on uh, speed, not on the price movement. Okay, like we can monetize on price movement too, but majorly uh, we are going to make money by uh, executing the order before anyone else. Now, how does that work? Let's try to understand. So before that, let's understand what does exchange do. Okay, so exchange is a place where a buyer and seller meets. Okay, so when someone wants to buy something, they offer a bid and they offer a bid at the lowest price possible, at the best price possible or you can say the lowest price possible. And when someone wants to sell, he wants to sell at a higher price. So he will provide an offer at a higher price, whatever higher price is possible. So this is what is happening in an exchange. Now when I say order, so there are two types of order. One is called passive order and one is called aggressive order. Passive order are like normal limit order and aggressive orders are market order. So the main reason why aggressive order market order exist is to get the fill as soon as possible with as less slippage as possible. Okay. Now the good thing about passive order that is market limit order is you can also cancel the orders. But market order once you place it once they get filled you cannot uh, cancel it like the same is true for a limit order once they get filled you cannot cancel the order. Now faster trade, why will we need to uh, get the fill faster? Okay, so there are three points that I have listed. One is priority in the order book, ensuring the orders are executed first. Uh, reduce adverse selection and lower slippages. Now the, the only reason that I can give you is, let's say you have decided to trade a stock and you have placed an order, but by the time your order gets executed, the price has already moved up. So you have lost that opportunity because of the speed right so this is one of the reason why the traders need the execution as fast as possible okay now let's try to understand order book how order book is created and how order book is managed by the exchange so this is a, a basic order book that i have here i have bid on the left side on on the right side i have offer you can see i have offer one offer two offer three offer four offer five i have bid one bid two bid three bid four bid five and this is the size. When I say size, it means the quantity. You can say 55 quantity uh, wants to be bought at 100.0. 1000 quantity wants to be bought at 100.0 again. Uh, 3100 wants to be bought at 99.99. Now you notice one thing that at 100, I have two bid. Okay. And at 99.9 uh, .9 also, I have two bid. Same is for offer also. At uh, like for 100, at 100.01, I have one offer. Uh, at 100.02 I have another offer like I have two offers at 100.02 100.03 I have single offer now the order book follows a price time priority system now what is this okay let me explain you let's say someone places a bid at uh, 100 rupees with a quantity of 1000 okay but before this someone else placed a bid at the same price so he will be given more priority compared to this 1000 quantity. So this 55 quantity will be filled first and then this 1000 quantity if the price is same. But let's say someone has placed 99.98 uh, before. Okay, he has placed an order with a quantity of 5000 and 99.98. But someone, uh, some other trader now placed at 99.99 with the quantity of 3100. So this will be given more priority. Why? Because this trader has a better bid. So you should either have a better price or you should either have a better time. If you come first to the exchange, you will get a priority. If you come with a better price, you'll get a better uh, priority. Okay, the same is true for the offer. Okay, let me give you one more example. Let's say someone comes in and he places an offer at uh, 100.04. Okay, so he he is given a spot in the order book, but someone again comes in and now he gives a better offer price. He says that I am ready to uh, provide an offer at 100.02. So before this, this order will be filled. Why? Because this has the higher priority. Why higher priority? Because it has a better price. But let's say again, another trader comes in and he provides the same offer. 
Now he will be given priority after this. Why? Because this offer five has a uh, has come to the exchange first. So the priority will be given to this offer first. So this is how the exchange decide which order to get filled, either depending on the price or depending on the time. Now let's say someone places a market order in this order book. So what will happen? So as you know, market order, the reason why people place market order is to get the fill as fast as possible. So he wants to buy 3000 share. So whatever the best offer is will be filled. So here you can see at 100.01, I have a size of 2000 and 100.02, I have a size of uh, 2950 and he wants to buy 3000 share. So this will be filled and 1000 from here it will be filled. So I'll have, so if you subtract 1000 from 2950, I'll have 1950. So the best offer now will be 100.02. This is how the market order is going to get filled. So uh, let me read the explanation. The market order consumed 2000 share at 100.01 offer 1 and 1000 share at 100.02 offer 2. The best price is 100.02. Speed ensure the order is executed before the price level shift unfavorably. So this is how the market order works. Now what if someone places a limit order? Now when someone places a limit order, he is either contributing to joining the market or he is improving the market. Now what do I mean when I say joining the market? Let's say a trader joins the market by placing a limit order uh, for 1000 share. Okay. Now, uh, and the price that he's placed the order at is 100.02. So what will happen at 100.02? See, there is 100.02, 100.02, 100.02. So previously the best offer at 100.02, how many sizes we have? We have 1950 and we have 600 at 100.02. Now someone has placed again at the same price. So we have a new offer. Okay. You see, this is offer six. And offer 6 will be above this offer 4. Why? Because offer 5, offer 4 is 100.03, but offer 6 is 100.02, which is closer to the market price. So it will be given higher priority. So what this order is doing, this is joining the market. Okay. Now offer 6 joins the best price at 100.02, but ranks lower in priority due to its later arrival. So this, this offer rank will be lower to the other two. Why? Because this has come after the previous two orders. Okay. So this is how the limit order works. Now limit order can also help in improving the market. Let's say a trader improves the market by placing a limit order to sell at a better price. Now the best price available is 100.02. Someone comes in and he places a limit order at 100.01. So now 100.01 will be given the highest priority. You can see 100.01, 2000 quantity. This is offer seven. So what this offer seven is offer seven is doing offer seven improves the best offer price to 100.01 gaining the top priority despite being the most recent order. Okay. This is how uh, the order book works and this is how the exchange decide which order to get filled first. Now, if you understand this, you know, you can come up with a strategy uh, that can monetize on this price difference only and only if you can uh, detect and place the order before anyone else. And this is what HFT is all about. Okay, getting the price before anyone else and placing the order and getting the fill before anyone else. If you can do this uh, before everyone, you are going to make money. If you are late in doing this, you are going to lose the opportunity. Okay, all the companies, all the HFT firms are doing the same thing. Now, there is one major challenge in this that is data burst. Because in exchange, at some time you will get a lot of orders and sometime you will not get major order. Like, uh, you know, like so at some usually... In 99 percentile, we get 56 messages in per in a single millisecond. Whereas on a normal second, we get 13 messages per second. So this may vary. And if there is an extreme event, then the number of orders received to the exchange will increase more. And this is when, uh, you know, the high HFT firm struggles a bit. Now, how can you reduce this latency? How can you get the price fast? How can you place the order fast? So you can use technologies like co-location. What is co-location? When you buy a server inside the exchange, you pay the exchange some money so that you can upload your code in that co-location and uh, the code itself will take the trade for you. So you have to buy. So this is one thing you can do. You can invest on better communication system, you know, getting the data, uh, fiber optics, like use micro wave or laser technology to get this data faster. Uh, or you can... You know, you can also invest on order book construction, like investing on technology, in, uh, like hiring the better uh, developers, because you will be getting the raw data from the exchange, right? Converting that data, uh, you know, 
and analyzing the data faster than anyone else requires better developers. Uh, so these are all the things that you can use to reduce the latency. I'm, I'm talking about business standpoint right now. Now, how does HFT make money? Uh, so there are uh, three ways by which they can make money. One is called market making, one is called arbitrage and one is called fast alpha. Now market making can be contractual or it can be non-contractual. Now what is contractual market making? So what we do, we officially, you know, we directly talk to the exchange and we become a market maker for that exchange. So what we will do as a market maker, uh, it doesn't matter uh, what someone wants to buy or sell. I'm going to place a trade for everyone. Okay, what do I mean? Let me explain. So market maker provide liquidity. So the only job a market maker is doing is it provide liquidity, meaning they are always ready to buy or sell a stock. This helps the market flow smoothly. This is what market maker do. The faster they act, the more they earn. So here I have an example. Let's say a stock has a bid price at 100 and an ask price at 100.05. 100 so someone is ready to buy at 100. Someone is ready to sell at 100.05. So what market maker will do, he will come in and he's going to place a buy order at 100.02 and sell at 100.03 and he will make a small profit of 0.01 dollar per share. But the risk involved in this is so low. He don't have to depend on the direction, whether the market moves up or down. Just by looking at this difference, he has made a profit. This is called market making. Now this is, you can officially do this or you can unofficially also do this. Uh, when you don't pay the exchange, this is called non-contractual market making. So these trade looks for chances where the market lacks liquidity. So wherever there is no liquidity, as a non-contractual market maker, I'll go there and I'll provide liquidity and I'm going to earn money from the difference in the bid ask. Then we also have arbitrage. Arbitrage is also similar. Like we either use statistical arbitrage or you can do uh, cross-market arbitrage. Like uh, let's say a stock is trading at $50 at NYSE. And the same stock is trading at $50.10 at in, in European exchange. So there is a price difference in two different exchanges, right? So I will write a code. The major, the moment there is a difference in this price, I'll place the order in both the exchanges. Okay. So a trader buys the stock at NYSE and sells it at European exchange and earn the profit of the $0.10 uh, per share. So this is called arbitrage, cross exchange arbitrage opportunity that you can monetize on. Then we can also, we can also develop a strategy uh, called fast alpha where we use machine learning to predict what can be the next price at a particular instance okay so we will uh, statistical and machine learning models we will create and we'll try to predict and if our prediction is correct and we, we can place an order before that happens right so a lot of research is going on in this domain uh, you can just read about it you'll come to know how they are doing it there are a few firms which are doing this, by the way, it is not impossible because at a very lower level, okay, at that frequency level, uh, like these machine learning models and all can be used to uh, do a little prediction. I don't know the accuracy and all, but it is, it, it might be possible. Okay, you can read about it. Now, how do HFT manages risk? So there are three major risks. One is speed risk. Like if you, even if you lose uh, time by a millisecond, you'll lose an opportunity. Tech failure, you know, everything is about tech. <laughs> no human is doing this. Uh, everything is done by computer. So uh, you need extremely good and high tech. Regulatory changes. Uh, since you are doing stuff which is not understandable by most of the traders or most of the normal being. So regulatory bodies also pay a lot of attention to you. Okay. I'll give you an example like what can go wrong. Like I have a thing in the next part there you'll understand uh, what they do like high frequency trading company they usually diversify their trades why because let's say if something happens with a single stock there is a sudden movement in a single stock they don't want to lose major capital so they will hardly invest 0.1 percent of the portfolio on a single stock and remember like for this thing you need a lot of capital this cannot be done because you want to buy and sell at the same time so you need that much of capital okay so this is how like they manage risk uh, technology, low latency network, co-location services, algorithm, uh, server located near NYSE cuts the latency by 2 milliseconds. So whatever is needed to reduce the latency, they are going to invest in that. That's what these companies do. Now, what are some pros and cons of HFT firm? So pro is it provides liquidity. If we don't have HFT firm, if we don't have market makers, then uh, getting a fill might take like one minute, five minute, 10 hour or even a day. 
even that is possible if there is like zero liquidity no one is ready to buy no one is ready to sell how will you get a fill right so hft firms are very important they make money but they make money because they have invested so much of money right if you as an individual want to start your own company no one is stopping you to do that okay you need to invest in that capital you need to invest on uh, on everything that is required on the talent and all what are the cons creates an unfair advantage at a uh, very low level but see even though they have an advantage but there are other hft firms too everyone is competing for that uh, uh, price difference or the bid ask difference so if you are slower even by a millisecond or a nanosecond the other company will monetize on that difference so it's not like this is competition free when people started initially doing this type of trading at that time it was quite uh, lucrative but now there are so many companies in the market uh, so the profit uh, that you would have gained earlier is quite less compared to now okay so now there is a event that happened which this event is quite quite famous called flash crash so there is a video on this you can just go through this video uh, i'll just try to explain you what happened on on this uh, day so this is a indian guy called uh, what is his name i don't know the name uh navindra saro okay so what this guy did now has you have understood the order book now you know if i can place a limit order and i can cancel the limit order too so he started placing limit order but those limit orders were not intended to get the fill those limit orders were just to move the prices so he started placing multiple orders once the price moves up he'll cancel the order now the price moved not because of the actual trading this is because of that fake orders so this is called order spoofing okay so this order spoofing was spotted uh, because of this guy so i don't know other firms were doing it or not but see he was the one who got caught i i like it it will not be wrong to say that other firms were not doing this but yeah this is what they were doing they were spoofing the order they were making the market move up and they were monetizing on that movement right so this is like because of this you know the regulatory body started uh, looking after these firms more so anything shady they do now you know they get caught they have lot of regulation lot of thing they have to do so that such type of thing don't happen now this is one of the uh, discrepancies that i have discussed with you there might be others too which other companies are exploiting okay and they don't have any competition because they have the talent who can research they can do the r and d and you know after doing all that thing they deserve that uh, edge you can say right so what are some controversies related to hft does hft create unfair competition they do but they heavily invest on it so they deserve it that's my personal view okay you can read uh, rishi narang book he he has explained it properly does hft lead uh, to market manipulation you can just read about it okay uh, like i'm not there to comment on this i have provided you the answer you can read about it does hft increases volatility uh, create structural instability in some cases yes if there is a extreme market movement uh, then hft firms can create can contribute to the extreme movement but it is also responsible for stabilizing the market uh, does hft lack social value like a lot of people say that you know hft is not actually increasing or decreasing the stock price but they are contributing to it by providing the liquidity which is by the end of the day helping the traders or the normal normal uh, individual or a retail trader to invest so you can say uh, they are adding a social va value but in a different way regulatory con consideration the you can just read about it okay so this is how the high frequency trading works okay so that's it for the video if you want to access this note just uh, message me on whatsapp uh, i'll just send